Let's take a look at the finger numbers for St. Anne, number two. Okay, we're going to follow the same procedure we've been following. So again, we're going to be looking at the base and tenor lines in the left hand first. And we are specifically looking for areas where we cannot reach both notes. So um, places where the distance exceeds an octave between the bass and tenor voices. So I'm just going to highlight some, some of these that I see. So in the very first beginning, we don't actually reach an octave until, until here. okay. And since it's an octave, it's not an issue, we can totally reach that. Uh, when I see the octave, and I see the fact that it exceeds the octave in the next measure, I'm looking at the right hand here to just determine what I want to take the C with the right hand. And because at this point it goes up to a higher C, um, I would not. If, if this was still a G here, then I would be very tempted to possibly take the C just because it's relatively close together. But since it's not, we're, we're just going to um, take the C here. Well, that said, we could, this could actually be an easy way to do this here. So I'll leave that as an option. Um, going forward, we also exceed an octave over here. So we'll definitely want to take this with the right hand. Um, and I'm looking at the previous one over here. It's just a fifth, so I'm probably not. And then the next system, we don't exceed an octave at all. And actually, we don't even reach an octave, so that is fine. There's always more than one solution for the fingering in terms of hymns, because remember that these are actually composed um, for singers. So four different voice parts. So pretty simple there. All right. So now that we've completed that, let's go ahead and talk the specific fingerings here. So this kind of forces our hands with the right hand fingerings um, on these two positions here. So we can actually look at this chord here. This will definitely want to be one, two, five on the C, E, G, C, E, C. So we can reach it. And then we can work backwards from that point. Okay, which means this will be very easy if we did one, two, three. Because then we'll be able to reach it very easily. And since um, the second finger is still on the E, we'll just do two, five on the previous chord. And that makes that section very easy. So working backwards is a very good way to determine your finger numbers. All right, so now let's go quickly through this here. And again, this is just a suggestion. You do not have to use this finger number um, sequence. If you find a, a one that is more comfortable for you, you can use that, okay? Okay, I'm gonna suggest that um, Keep with a closed hand position. One five here. You could do one four or one three, but let's let's try this here. Then one three on the C E. The next part is actually um, a tricky one here, but I'm going to suggest that we do one five. We have two eighths here, so you would then use second finger. Now on this next one, this is where it's a little bit of a different type of fingering. One four, and I'll show you why because. We're going from one five, two, and then you could do three four, but using those two fingers together, three and four, is usually kind of uncomfortable. So tucking the thumb under will probably feel easier for most of you. Okay, like that. And then we'll just go to one five, one five. One five, like that. Moving along. A 
again more options, but I'm going to suggest one three, one four. You could do one three one four again, um, or one two one three. Since we're already on fourth finger here, let's let's do it with one two one three. So there's a little less shifting. On this one here, I'm going to suggest actually 1-4 at the end of that first system. And then measure 5, 2-5, five, 1-4. Same thing, 2-5, 1-4. Same thing here, two, five, one, four. And then the octave will obviously be one, five. One, three here. And then, let's see here. Yeah. It'll actually be easier if we did one, three again, then one, four, then one five, one four, and you could either do two five or one five. Okay. So that's, oops, I think so. Come back. So that's fingering for the right hand. Okay, let's do the fingering for the left hand now. Beginning, let's see here. All right, let's do five three, then five one, then we'll shift up again and do five three, two, five one, like that. Next one will be one, two, and then it makes sense to just go to two, four, then three. On the next one, I'm going to suggest we do two or two, five. Actually, no, we're not taking that C in the right hand, so we don't need to worry about that, actually. Okay, since this is the case, let's do this. Since we're taking the C with the right hand, let's go to our thumb. Let's shift to our thumb on the G, actually. So it's 4-2, then 1. Yeah, this will make it easier. Yeah, here we go. And then... You could even stretch and do one three here. Because then, because then your third finger is already here. I'll put a C and then five. That'll be easier. Like that. Exactly. That's good. And then we'll jump back up to one three. Then one five. One four, and then jump down to five on the low G. This will be a one. Onto the second system. Uh, let's do two five. One three. Two, five, one, three, then 
two, four. Lots of options. I'm actually going to suggest that you do one, four here, but if you want it to stay on two, you can. So it would be three, two, four, one, four, and three, five. It's actually a fingering that makes sense for legato. Two five, one three, two, two five. Okay. So that's the fingering for this hymn.